Welcome, rugby fans, to the Northern Super Regionals Division II semifinals featuring the Battle of the Barbarians. It's Milwaukee versus Denver. I'm Grant Harrison, joined in the booth alongside, alongside Nick Cummings. We are coming to you live from beautiful Chicago, Illinois. Nick, what a day it is for rugby. What do you say? It's been a beautiful day for rugby. This is our third game here on field two. Games one and two did not disappoint, and I expect this one to be just as glorious as the first two. Both of these teams are hard-fought hard teams, and they are both here in this Super Regional for a reason, and I cannot wait for the next 80 minutes of rugby. Yes, it should be an exciting one. Uh, Nick, you and I were talking earlier today. Denver has gotten the best of Milwaukee over the years, but both of these teams are so solid and they've worked so hard to get here. It looks like we'll have Denver on the left side of your screen in the striped jerseys and Milwaukee on the right. As we get the kickoff underway here, we are getting things started here in Chicago. Beautiful day for rugby and a beautiful carry up the center, sorry, left side of the field as the eight man for Milwaukee, Tom Fossil carries that one up and some phases starting to be put together here. Milwaukee gets a penalty early for not rolling away against Denver. You see Colin DeCampo there, DeCampo for Milwaukee. He is a tough loose head prop to face off against as this kick for touch sails over our broadcast booth and will end up just outside midfield. Milwaukee side of the pitch. A couple good phases there to start off the day, eh, Nick? Yeah, excellent from Milwaukee. Now we're going to see the first set piece of the day, see what they pull out here. Uh, Denver's a tough side, but I know Milwaukee's looking for it all this weekend, trying to move to that national semifinal in a couple weeks but they need to win today and win tomorrow to get that done and it all starts right now against their foe the barbarians beautiful carry off that line out way to keep it alive for deo campo as we move towards the center of the field some back play there finds a way to push the gain line little offload will end up called as a knock but Denver comes up with advantage, and they keep this one alive as we'll stay rolling here early on in the first half. First couple minutes underway. We've already seen a possession change and a set piece. Should be an exciting one. What a snag there to keep that alive, and a beautiful offload. Let's play along the touchline for Denver. Sent out there by Kilfoyle. Now the nine regains control. That's Kafanek. Kafanek again there to kill foil. That's sent to the left side of the field. High stepping. Beautiful fin, but he knocks it on as he goes to ground. And this time we'll have a scrum down for Milwaukee. Yeah, Denver just moving forward phase after phase and just an excellent job on the double tackle there. One person wrapped him up while the second person went for the strip on the ball, able to get it, and Milwaukee's going to have the scrum just on their half of midfield. We haven't seen a 50-22 yet today, Grant. Always one of my favorite things, one of the great new rules they've added last couple years, and uh, I'd love to see one today. I don't know about you. Well, we'll see what comes to it as Tim Grahams will set this one in for the scrum. Milwaukee with a very solid scrum. Mentioned that started with Dale Campo, but all the tight five of Milwaukee – Know how to get that push in. Rolling over the opponent there. Good job securing the ruck. Ellis, he's not going to slow down as he sends that one quickly. Goes to a pod system here. Milwaukee knows how to move it. But he'll just run straight as that one's taken away. Little play off the 10 here. Odd comes in for the security. Denver doing a good job of sharing up these rucks. But, oh, it's their second knock. This one goes into touch. We'll see what would be called. 
it'll be a scrum, not touch. Yeah, just a few times. I think that's already the third time this game the balls hit the ground for Denver, just trying to move the ball wide. Unfortunately, can't connect on the pass, but something they definitely need to clean up. They cannot give Milwaukee free possession like this throughout the game. We saw that ball poached by Denver there at midfield. What does Milwaukee need to do to secure up those rucks, Nick? Uh, just just get there a little faster. They're not right. Denver's a quick team that they like to poach the ball, but and so Milwaukee needs to get there fast. Their support needs to be on top of their player as soon as he hits deck. And if you, if you do that, you won't lose the ball to any poaches. Both teams have their captain as forwards. Milwaukee has Tom Fossil as their eight listed as their captain. As we see some backline play here. Met into contact quickly. Denver with a good up. And you see the defense coming in strong again as that one's almost poached away another time. But Milwaukee maintains possession as they send this one to the weak side of the field. A little less space to work with over there. This one blown dead as a handling error results in another knock. This game could be tough yep. for the forwards. Both teams already struggling to get the ball moving side to side. And that might just be early game jitters five minutes in here. You know, super regional semifinals, trying to make your way into the top eight of the nation with a win today. So some careless mistakes from both sides, by it, but I expect it to be clean up. Denver's chance at a scrum here. Their captain, number seven, Alex Warmer. A good carry there. Post it down, picks it up again. A little miscommunication there, but it's all right. Ruck secured. Play off the 10 here. Right to the back line. He's got some room to work with. Does a good job pushing the gain line. Gains about eight meters there. Maybe a little more. Denver now with a beautiful chance. Keep working the weak side of the field. Going with the flow. Smart play here for Denver. Trying to roll this one in. Referee tells him to get back. Milwaukee has to watch offsides. You don't want one there. And this one wide open underneath the post and brought in for the score. That one a full team effort. As we wait to see the number on the back of his kit to see who scored but we'll just list him as a barbarian. And what a score that was, huh, Nick? Well, can't list him as a barbarian this game as both, te both teams are barbarians, <laughs> but definitely a Denver barbarian in the try zone that time. But excellent phase work from the Denver barbarians just side to side and ended up coming away with a tremendous try there in the middle, found the gap. And unfortunately, like like we said, couldn't get the number for you, but found the gap and was able to put it into the try zone right in the middle too. Conversion good. And we have the Denver Barbarians up seven nothing here, seven and a half minutes in, but excellent work from Denver there. Sean Kilfoyle with that conversion. As soon as we get another look at that number, we'll let you know who scored that one for Denver. But again, a good team effort there. Denver cleaning up those ball handling errors. As Milwaukee gets set to kick this one off. Does it have enough distance? Just barely so. And Milwaukee gets it with a nice tip there at the hands. I believe that was Ty Ash. Good carry here by Thomas. Support with him. Goes from Grams to Grams. Some pod play here. That one backwards. But Denver scoops it up. Will they score? He doesn't have a man with him. He's got to go. Drops the ball. Secures onto it. And it will be a knock called on Denver. Just about five meters out of the try zone. 
we'll take another look at that first try. Keep your eye on the left side of your screen as Denver does a good job flipping the field. And hammers that one in. In that most recent phase, we see just an errant pass from Milwaukee. Denver able to pick it up. I thought he I thought he had the speed to take it all the way, but gets tracked down and then just loses the ball forward, trying to offload it to a teammate. So unfortunate from Denver and good for Milwaukee to get out of that situation. That's a big push there by Denver, but Milwaukee does get their ball back. As they go to kick for touch, it bounces just in the opposite way. Oh, and a Ooh. beautiful pick there by number 14. That's Kevin Schmidt off to the races as he centers that one down right underneath the post, and he is fired up as the Milwaukee Barbarians have a chance to tie it up against the Denver Barbarians here with this pending conversion. Excellent read from Kevin Schmidt there. Just the Barbarians, after the kick, didn't gather it quickly, and then they tried to go wide, but Kevin Schmidt on the chase. Excellent job reading the pass. Interception brought it all the way for the pick five in rugby with their fly half. Now Liam Hanley going to try to add the conversion. And just over 10 minutes have been played. We've got 7-5 to five Milwaukee. Pardon me, Denver. And this is a big conversion here. Hanley puts this one up. And he's locked in as he sends it right through the uprights. And all the way from Lamont into Lake Michigan, as he had the boot on that one. And speaking of Lamont, Milwaukee's only about two hours from Lamont. Denver had the big travel. Do you think travel plays a factor in today's game, Nick? Uh, I think it could, depending on when the team came in. I'm sure all these team teams showed up Friday, hopefully early in the day, maybe at night. You know, these guys do have work. This is just club rugby, so... But let's see Denver electing to go short on this one. Both teams recovering their kick off of the try. When Milwaukee did it, it led to another try. Let's see if Denver can fire back here. Calling for it on the left side. Goes for the short pass. Little playoff kill foil for Denver. Good security of the ruck there. Good ball movement. Along the right side, he's off. Brought down, he waits for it. Almost poached. Denver maintains possession now. Got to keep those rucks secure if you're Denver. Milwaukee doing a great job of pressuring them. Play through the middle of the field. Oh, and a beautiful crash. That one pushes the gain line about three meters. Kaffinex going to slow this one down. And it's the right call as that phase knocking on the door. Can he punch this one in? Yes, he does. That's Castro for the score, and the big man is in for five. Again, we see the multiple phases coming out for Denver, leading to an, their second try of the game. That time we saw a good breakaway run from the wiener, Jake Vassar, to set his team up inside the 22, deep in the territory of Milwaukee and then brought all the way back to the wide side of the field for us just to be dotted down for the second try of the game. Denver with the lead 12 to seven with the kick still to be taken. 
That first try by Denver scored by Dakota Southworth, number six. And again, that one, Cortland Castro on the previous try. As Kilfoyle will line up for another conversion. He's in a tough spot here as he takes his time lining this one up. He's got the leg on him. Does he have the aim? He does. That one's through. So it's 14-7 to seven now for Denver here in this battle. And at what a heavyweight bout this is. Back and forth. Milwaukee battle never gaining possession. The Battle of the Barbarians living up to its name thus far. 14-7, to seven, one score game. Both team having chances. And let's take a look at this try. What do you see here, Nick? I mean, just excellent phase work from the from Denver, just moving the ball. Every time they ran a phase, they had Milwaukee moving backwards, and that's, you know, do that enough times, you'll find yourself in the try zone. We'll have stoppage here as it's a knock-on called on Denver. Milwaukee almost gaining possession after that kickoff, but they'll go from the set piece instead. Nick, what have you seen from both sides thus far? Uh, well, I've seen tremendous phase play with the ball from Denver, right, with the ability to sprinkle in a few individual big runs has helped them put two tries on the board here early, and Milwaukee just when they have had possession of the ball, also doing a tremendous job. So both teams need to step it up defensively. And those mistakes we saw in the first five minutes have gone away. The the bad passes, the, well, a caster's curse on that one. <laughs> Threw that one straight into <laughs> touch, but a penalty for Milwaukee. And this is close enough. Not, we may see a kick at post. Not rolling away the call. And it looks like that might be Ty Ash. A little slow to get up there, but he'll work this one off as we will go for a kick for points here. And Milwaukee down seven to Denver. Early in the match, you got to go for the points, right, Nick? Yes, take the points when you can get them, especially in a close game, especially early in the game. Only... A converted try difference, 16 minutes into this one, so points are the right answer for Milwaukee. For Milwaukee. See what Hanley can do here. And the winner of this matchup will face the winner of Indianapolis over Kansas City. Sorry, or Kansas City, as that game just entering its second half. Right now, 44 minutes on the board, 15 to 12 for Indy. That kick no good, so Denver will get a drop here. They elect to keep this one in, and... As it trickles out, what a Ex kick for touch. Excellent. This one Excellent 22 the from there. Yeah, literally 22 to just about your opponent's 22. Couldn't have asked for a better drop kick from there. So getting ready for the line out here. Mall forms. Denver engages. And it's a knock. Just a little too crowded in that mall or what, Nick? Uh, maybe trying to bring the ball back after it was brought down, just not handled cleanly by the Milwaukee. I believe that was their hooker who threw it in. Jarrett apt 
just didn't handle the ball cleanly coming back from his line out jumper. And Denver, again, a scrum knocking on the door of the 22 of Milwaukee. Denver in striking distance. They won't push too much here as they're focused on back play. Good carry here by Brown. Good security on the ruck as well. And another handling error for Denver. This one just dropped a weight on their own foot. As it could have led to a try. Yeah, that's their fourth one of the game, but their first since the five-minute mark of this one. Since then, they've been able to put up two tries, but just, again, as you said, could have that could cost them a try, could cost them more points on the board. Milwaukee on their own 22 here. Good placement. Kept at the feet of Fossil. And an exit. What a soaring boot this is. Good job getting under it. And we'll play a bit of tennis here. This one goes out just past halfway. Or maybe right at halfway. Assistant referee Went straight keeps on into, walking. Stra straight into touch. And he was out. Denver player was outside his 22. So we're going to go back to where it was kicked. Uh, just Thank you for that clarification, Nick. <laughs> no worries. I know the camera angle was kind of hard to see on that one. <laughs> but Always uh, keeping me humble. But Luca had thrown that interception last time for the for the try for Milwaukee, and he wanted to kick this one away. And unfortunately for him, went Beautiful. straight into touch. Beautiful crash line sent to Appel here as he goes diving 15 meters forward and gets a penalty as well. Just a high tackle here as. Our referee will have a conversation with Denver. Mentions yeah, not, not something you well. want to see. Not something you want to see, especially early in this match. If he's already talking to you, that means a yellow card might be in your future. Denver captain Alex Warmer relaying that message to his team as Milwaukee will Line up for more points here. Their first penalty, no good. Let's see what they can do with their second attempt. This just shows how much trust Milwaukee has in their kicker, Liam Hanley. Missed the first one, but said, that's all right. Have another shot at it as soon as we have the opportunity. He's going to make good on it. Fly half puts that one through. Hanley, good for another three. So Denver will have a chance to regain some control on defense. We've seen both teams take possession back shortly after kickoff. Yeah, Milwaukee was set up kind of weird on their kickoff. Had one person in the middle covering the kicker, but everyone else was deep. And I believe they fixed that mistake because Denver did not go short again. Milwaukee here, good movement to the edge. Milwaukee's fixed their mistake of not securing the ruck. Good dummy line as he goes to Hanley. And it's all the way flipping the field. A handling error on Milwaukee. Not only that, we're going to get a penalty for Denver. Looking to kick it to touch close, trying to add some more points to their lead. Oh, and this one's right on the doorstep here. But it's coming all the way back. I think it may have gone. I think it may have gone straight. Yeah. 
out the back of the try zone. I don't think he found touch. I think you're right, Nick. So we'll have a so another Milwaukee scrum. scrum, a turn of events there. Denver with the opportunity to put it close for a line out, just missing touch. Denver only up four. They could have used that one. As we run, as we run past our twenty minute mark, sent through the legs. But Hanley does a good job of getting on top of it. And Ash does a good job of carrying that one into contact. Some aggressive play around the ruck there, but who can blame him? As another good exit for Milwaukee. Takes the pressure off. And he goes out into touch. Did, did he touch that before he went? Oh my goodness, why wouldn't he just let the ball go into touch? Oh, sometimes you just try to gain control of it. I believe he thought he had it. Oh, but now the now the head referee is giving it to Denver. Oh, what? Wow, I thought the – oh, my goodness. I thought the Denver player touched it before, while going into touch, just making a crucial mistake. But the after the referees have a discussion, they give the ball to Denver. Update on field one, Indianapolis is playing with a yellow card, down 19 to 15 to Kansas City now. But turning our attention back here to field two, good carry by Denver. Kept up here and finally brought down. So this will go to Milwaukee. So both teams with a great scrum today. Milwaukee just past midfield. See what they can do here with this opportunity. Good job by the flanker to keep that one in the scrum. Now Milwaukee looking to piece this one together. Keep an eye on that man all day today. Jordan Thompson. He's been dominant all spring. He's got the speed on him as well. Milwaukee's got the numbers in that ruck, that's for sure. Not rolling away the call on Denver there. And that is multiple times now we've seen Denver not rolling away. Last time they didn't roll away, the referee had a discussion with Denver's captain. That was a while ago, though, so... No discussion this time. No cards shown this time. This kick to touch will be Milwaukee's ball. And I believe the reason there was no card or further discussion there was because that previous chat was more so about the high tackle. This one a straight not rolling away call. Yeah, and that other one was close to the try line as well, so can't give up penalties oh, close to your own try line. Beautiful play by Motor to see that one going over and gain possession there. Tries to go for the offload. Can't find his man. That one to the heels of Thompson. You don't want to give Thompson too much room, that's for sure. Nor do you want to give Schmidt too much room as he punches that one through for about a Eight meter gain. Good tackle there by Denver. And another good one. Both sides showing textbook defense, textbook form tackling, getting their men down. Just 
Just over 10 minutes to go here in this first half. It has been back and forth all day. Milwaukee can hold on to it for a while. But they might send this one past. Look at the game by Schmidt there. And a good offload by Dio Campo before he goes into contact. Now Joe Grams will go for the pick, but not before it's whistled dead. Excellent phase play coming in from Milwaukee. That had to have been 10-plus phases they just went through all the way from midfield getting down close to the 22, and now they're going to find themselves deep in Denver territory. Just excellent work. Like you said, a couple good runs coming out from Schmidt, the try scorer. And then the penalty there to cap it off now with a line out chance 10 meters out. We're not sure if these line outs are just as Milwaukee drew them up or been a little rusty, but this mall forming the security there. Good out there. They've learned their lesson. Didn't knock it on. Good play there to get as far out as possible. Flip the field. Giving their backs room. And they'll push it out even further. There's a hard carry by Milwaukee. Pushing the territory of Denver. We'll pick their good post. Got to watch the touch line there. Keeps the offload. That little back pocket ball. Great work from Denver there to get their hands on that one before the Ruck supporters came in for Milwaukee. Drawing the penalty. You saw Milwaukee inching themselves towards that try line. Looked like they were going to put more points on the board for themselves. But good job from Denver to slow them down. Not releasing the call there, it looked like. So a line out for Denver here in their own territory. We've seen a mall by Milwaukee. We haven't seen Denver form a mall of their own. But they're just outside the 22, so no sense in doing that. Look at the speed, the footwork, and oh, the knock at the very end. Oh, it could have been beautiful. Dakota South. Could have been could have been beautiful is right. They had the numbers. They had the space. They had it all except clean ball to hand. Just could not find it. And it it wasn't the best pass, but it wasn't the worst pass. Hip level for his teammate and just unfortunately knocked on. And Denver with a missed opportunity there. Maybe not have put points on the board with that one, but definitely would have gotten a big gain in deep in Milwaukee territory. If you're just joining us, I'm Grant Harrison. That's Nick Cummings. This is the men's Division II semifinal. Coming to you live from Chicago. And Milwaukee will have the scrum here in the blue kits. Denver in the green and white stripes. Just about eight minutes before halftime here. Both sides with good scrums today. Another good job by the flanker, keeping that one in. Good crash line there by Thompson. That is the second time they've run that crash line, and it goes for big meters, but both times they've had that ball poached right afterwards. Denver will have a line out. I'd say about 30 meters outside. Both sides have been going with a five-man line out. Good swift play here. Long pass there by Kenson. Keeps it alive. And on the edge, the offload by Pavlikis. Just mishandled. We're still playing. Oh, it went into touch there. And Just unfortunate. Step what, 
What a run from the fullback for Denver. Luka Pavlakis and tries to give the out the back to his teammate, but unfortunately couldn't find it cleanly and ball rolls in the touch, but they definitely had an opportunity there. So a throw in now by Jared Apt of Milwaukee. A little volleyball action there almost. And this kick kept in. Good crisp passes here. Oh, and he's got daylight. Brown off to the races. Can he be brought down? No. He gets the offload just in time. Great support there by Denver to keep this alive. Keeping the ball moving. They'll go with the forward pod. Just about 10 meters out now. Met right at the gain line. Tries to go with the pick, but it's bobbled. Still kept in the hands of Denver. Pushing it further and further. Could this be a knock? Oh, it just Denver might be. Advantage. Denver playing advantage for an offsides on Milwaukee a couple phases ago. So they were being a little loose with the ball there, trying to find the try zone. But now they're going to have a penalty five meters out. Now you've got to be strict with it. This one carried right in. And oh, can you blame the defensive captain? line there? The two people in front of where the ball was tapped pushed heavy for Milwaukee, but the rest of the line slacking. The rest of the defensive line was slacking. And number seven there for the Denver Barbarians, Alex Wormer, the captain, puts five on the board for his team. Alex Warmer has had a great day. He's had some crisp, clean passes. And now he just takes that penalty on his own. As we get ready for the conversion from Kilfoil. We've got the finishers of Milwaukee warming up there. Beautiful day here in Chicago. 73 degrees. That conversion sent right through, so it's 21 to 10 for Denver. Just a few minutes before halftime here. And we've seen Denver the last probably 10 minutes have possession of the ball, maybe 70% of the time. And Milwaukee having their opportunities deep in Denver territory, just not able to capitalize. But Denver able to return the favor put more points on the board 21 to 10 now about three minutes left in the first half according to our clock but official time is kept on the field by the sir in the center here's we've got a substitution here de campo will be substituted off Looks like we might check, double check numbers. Looks like Palmer Fares to me. No, it's, it might be Sam Clock. Here's the kick here. High in the air, Denver recovers. But it's a knock. Knock them in one off sides by Denver after the knock, not giving Milwaukee a chance to play advantage. So they're going to decide to go to post again. Sean Gorman with the knock there. Going for post. That's Liam Hanley again. Just a few minutes before we go to half here, Nick, what does Milwaukee need to do to regain those 11 points lost? Well, Milwaukee needs to, when they have the ball, retain possession. They're having tremendous 
open phase play, but then they'll make one crucial mistake that'll turn the ball over a support player not getting there quick enough to the ruck or other things like that, maybe an arid pass. But defensively, they're just letting Denver string together too many phases, and their def defensive line pressure needs to be a little faster. But we see Liam there put three more on the board and cut this lead down to eight. Well, that'll help with the deficit. And it will get the ball back. So let's see what Milwaukee can do with ball in hand to clean up those airs. And, and two minutes ago away. here, Milwaukee, Milwaukee definitely has the talent to put another try on the board here. Especially with the short restart like that, but it's played by Milwaukee. And secured by Milwaukee as well. Just one foot away from the touch line. That met there. And look at the aggressive counter ruck. Oh, and a nice job running over his opponent. That's Cluck on the carry. That tackle riding up a little bit. Ref lets the boys play. Good boot. He'll take his time before thinking about touching it again. Oh, and this might be a knock here. Yes, it is. Another so knock Milwaukee on gets a by Denver. I think that's their fifth in the game. Just passing an open field, a, another knock from Denver. We've seen that mistake several times this first half. Here's another look at those carries there. It's a Milwaukee scrum. You see how deep Milwaukee's playing it so they can build up speed. There's Thompson, passes it out to Schmidt. Secured by Thompson. That ball sent out by Hanley. Good play amongst the forwards there. Devine will carry this one into contact. Look at the big man go as he's rumbling and stumbling his way through. Great tackle there by Denver to stop momentum. And with the scrum half in, Milwaukee will go with the forward play. Goes with the pick. Plays it safe. Slows this one down. Hanley. Out to Ash. Oh my. That one will trickle out. And just trying to find his wing there at the end. Had some space on the outside. Threw it overhand but unfortunately found its way into touch to end our first half. And as we go into halftime, Nick, what adjustments do you think need to be made by both sides? I think Denver's playing well. I think they need to clean up the ball in hand errors, the, the bad passes, the drop passes. I, other than that, I think they're playing. They played a tremendous first half. Milwaukee just needs to play a little bit better defensively. They've given up three converted tries to this Denver team. And then offensively, not make that mistake. We see them get down the field. We see them get close to the 22 and then turn the ball over. So Milwaukee just needs to clean it up a bit. And Denver do what they've been doing, just not have those drop passes. Well, as we send it to halftime, I'm Grant Harrison. That's Nick Cummings. We'll see you in just a few short minutes.
Welcome back to beautiful Chicago, Illinois. We've got the Battle of the Barbarians. It's Milwaukee versus Denver. If you're just joining us, I'm Grant Harrison, joined in the booth alongside Nick Cummings. And what a first half it was as we come back with a score of 21 to 13, Denver. Milwaukee in the blue jerseys, Denver in the green and white stripes. Kickoff here as we're underway. Denver gets some possession and a roaring carry there along the right side of the pitch. You can see the depth that Denver has been playing with today. Good speed. Good job meeting the game line there by Milwaukee. That carry there by Kenson, secured up by his teammates. And an exit now by Kilfoyle. That one sent all the way back, just about 10 meters outside of their own try zone. And right over the heads of our broadcast booth. Hopefully our camera operators enjoyed the haircut there. So we'll have a line yeah, out. A couple close, couple close calls today on our on our camera guys. I, these players might have it out for them. I think we owe them dinner after this. What do you say, Nick? I think so. They're out there in the sun working hard. We're, we're sitting in the shade talking oh, yeah. rugby. But a beautiful day out here. Lamont, Illinois. Excellent day for some super regional rugby. This is game three of three on field two. Men's Division II semifinal winner of this one will play tomorrow in the finals for a chance to go to the national championship semifinal. That game will be at 2 p.m. Central Time. It'll be between the winner of Kansas City and Indianapolis. Kansas City up now by five as that game is in its final legs. But in the beginning half of this second half, it's been Denver with the carries as Milwaukee gets a chance now to make their statement. Oh, poached here by Denver. Didn't have any men with him. Now the Denver Barbarians are knocking on the door, and oh, that pass just falls short. Looks like it was kicked out at the very end. I didn't see whose boot that was. But another handling error from Denver. They had the space. They have the opportunity. Just ball hits the deck when it shouldn't. And it looks like they will retain possession here as it was kicked out by a Milwaukee player. So they get a break. Both sides have had pretty good line out today so far. We've gotten more of a look at Milwaukee than Denver. As we figure out numbers here for the line out. See who's jumping. Looks like we'll have Southworth at the front, but it's a middle jump. Good play there. Goes right to his lead, man. I believe that's Kenson. And still rolling forward. Denver has done a nice job on these pair of phases to push the gain line. Goldblum there, the finisher. Now it's Kenson again. Oh, taken away by Milwaukee now. Ball came out of the side and the vision there by the Milwaukee Barbarians to hop on top of that as they stop what could have been a try for Denver. Milwaukee will slow this one down. Looked like that was Joe Graham's on the pass. 
Graham's with another pass. He's playing a bit of nine today. Another line out for Denver. Yeah, Milwaukee just trying to relieve some pressure. Not the kick Liam Hanley would have wanted to. Wanted to get it a little deeper out of his end, but relieve the pressure off the try line and Denver with the line out once again. Little conversation here between captains. Tom Fossil for Milwaukee on your left. That's Alex Warmer on your right for Denver. So both sides will deliberate. I wonder if he spoke to them about the, the rucks. It's been highly contested around all the rucks today. Denver goes to a six-man line out and works in their favor. In a hard crash line up the middle. Milwaukee does a good stop, good job stopping that. But Denver still approaching the gates. What a thunderous run here on the right side. Denver looking hard to stop here. Milwaukee looking for some payback from those years of pummeling that Denver has delivered. That's a true forward pod here by Denver. As both sides have had a bit of free play and a loose structure with the 13-31 See a back line here. Low pass brought up by Castro. And men outside with the advantage dies for the try. And he gets it. Look at that play on the edge there. The speed and the ability to keep that one in. Yeah, excellent job. Look. From Denver going sideline to sideline here. And, and as you can see, after this phase of play, tackle is made, ruck is formed. Look at all the Denver Barbarians flow from the right side to the left side. And Milwaukee just did not reciprocate it on defense. Excuse me, that was earlier when the poach happened for Milwaukee, but... As you saw there, the def Denver players rotating from the right to the left side. Same thing happened on the try. It looked identical. You thought I thought that was the one they just scored on. So, oh, I was right uh, there with you. Just, just the Denver players flowing from the right to the left, and the Milwaukee players not following suit, leaving it open for Denver number fourteen, Jake Vasser, finding the try zone. Kilfoyle will take his time setting this conversion up as he is out a mile. He's got the distance on him, just veers left. Maybe the wind had a factor to play in it. You see the wind moving from right to left across your screen. And from our vantage point at midfield, it's biting us right in the teeth here. So just over five minutes played here in the second half. Official time is kept on the field, so just keep note of that. There's another look at that try by Vassar. Colorado with ball here. It comes loose, but still kept alive by Denver. As they just approach midfield, it's a penalty for Milwaukee. Diving over the call. Yeah, Denver just a little antsy trying to get that ball. Unfortunately for them, 
Milwaukee's going to kick it here for a line out. Try to get some good distance. Try to put his team up in the 22 and right on the 22. Good work there from the boot of Liam. So, Nick, it's been back and forth all day, but here we stand. Denver up 13 points over Milwaukee. Yeah, Denver's just been able to capitalize inside the 22 more than Milwaukee has. You see Milwaukee coming away with some penalty kicks. Getting points is always nice, but when the other team's counting by seven and you're only counting by three, makes for a hard, hard game. That was a nice pass there off the hands of Joe Grams, who's been playing sort of a nine slash tight head today as he's been all over the field, giving his actual nine, Tim Grams, his brother, a little bit of a break there. Another kick for touch. Yeah, Milwaukee not electing to go for the points this time, down 13, about 30, just over 30 minutes left in this one, but they realize they need to put a try on the board. Denver is counting by tries. We need to at least match them if we want to stay in this game. Oh, knocked away by Denver there. Beautiful defensive play. Let's see if they can keep it alive. That ball on the ground brought up he has some room to breathe Denver needing an exit or how about a beautiful carry that offload though just a little bit slippy and unfortunately knocked on by Denver but they did a great job stealing the line out and then running a few phases getting it away from their try line but the Knock on coming out, and Milwaukee's going to have this ball now. Well, Nick, we saw it in the first game, the last game, and now this game. Some of those offloads, do you rein them in or just keep going with them? We've seen some knock-ons come from them. I think if you're deep in your side like this, you should play the ball, slow it down, look to get it away from your own try line. You know, maybe if you're in some space, and you're running down the field with your teammates. Yeah, you can give a give an offload in contact, but but when you're close to your own try line, you can't just give free possession to the other team. We see there some front row substitutes. Sam Cluck in at loosehead, and Joe Castle in at hooker for Milwaukee. This ball taken out, going from sideline to sideline, and it's a big run by Luke Ellis as he punches this one in for five. Yeah, excellent job from Milwaukee there. They faked the crash one crash run. They've been running it all day off of that scrum with Ty Ash, the 12. Faked it to him, faked another one to Jordan Thompson, the, the 13. Gave it out the back to Luke Ellis, who finds a gap. Fends off the opposing fullback and then dots it down in the try zone to cut this lead. Luke Ellis, the software salesman, comes up big on this one as we take another look at it. And there's that dummy line you were talking about. That fake crash. Ellis off to the races. Just a great individual run there from Ellis using his speed, his step, and the fend all in one to put five on the board for his team. Well, both sides are so evenly matched. They have such a similar playing style as we've talked about all day. But Milwaukee has been playing with each other for just a little bit longer. How does that team chemistry play a factor in today's matchup? 
Uh, team chemistry is always a big thing. Like you've noticed, Denver's had the ball on the ground a couple of times, couple missed offloads, where Milwaukee, we haven't seen that as much because they have been playing together longer. They've had more time to gel with each other. And scoreboard does have Denver leading, but Milwaukee's definitely not out of this one. Only a six-point game, a converted try for Milwaukee, and they're in the lead. And speaking of a close game on field one, it's 25-20 to 20 for Kansas City Rugby Football Club over Indianapolis with eight minutes to play. This ball straight out, so it'll be a scrum center for Milwaukee. And we see those front row substitutes. There, the loose head and the hooker. These finishers have played a factor today in all of our games so far. As in the last match, we saw a finisher score a try. Let's see what Milwaukee can do with their bench. And Milwaukee trying to get something going off this set piece, trying to ride that momentum of the try they just scored. We saw Milwaukee drive Denver back on their last scrum, and they're going to do the same on this one. Flips the field here. Beautiful cut back inside on that scissor. And that switch beautifully sets up a pod. We know those forwards can pass, and they do it again there. Beautiful grab by Tom Thompson Sorry, to keep that one alive. Played off the ground, and Milwaukee still rolling down the field. That one taken out of the ruck just in time. Milwaukee trying to slow things down here. Carried by Grams. He's got the support with him. Denver's got to watch that rolling away penalty. They've had two today. Oh, and rolls right over him. I believe that was Tom Fossil. Yes, it was. What a penalty for Denver here. Joe, Joe Goldblum, excellent job on the post. No supporters close for Milwaukee, and Joe is just able to get his hands on that ball and stay through contact on it. And then what a kick here to touch. Ball didn't find touch right away, but gets an excellent bounce for Denver. And now they're set up 10 meters out from the try line. Well, this is a beautiful beautiful spot to play off the field. What do you do here if you're Denver, Nick? We haven't seen them all from them yet. Uh, I wonder if they go to it, but they've been successful in their open field play. So really it's at their disposal. They've yet to lose a line out and they don't lose that one and they are going to go for the mall. Kept up. He's still going for it. Does he get it? Yes, he does. That's number 20. Estevan Crispin on the score. And again, a finisher comes through with a big try at a momentous moment. Yeah, great job there. The mall, they went for the mall. It seemed to have collapsed right away. So Estevan just taking it himself right through the middle of the defense who looked a little confused after that mall collapsed. And Estevan just putting five more on the board, extending this lead. But as you said, a finisher coming on the field and making an impact. But still a lot of time left in this game if you're Milwaukee. Milwaukee has kept it close. Denver trying to prove something here. A 
big conversion kick here coming up. He's got the distance. Waiting judgment. Doesn't look like he got it, though. I and think he no, hooked he in a little bit, Grant. Yep. But 31 to 20, Denver in the lead in the Battle of the Barbarians. What a battle it has been. As we get started again here. Knocked forward. Advantage for Denver. Denver will play it. Good call there by the referee. Hard to miss that one. Not rolling away on Milwaukee. When you got to shovel a man out of the ruck, it's pretty easy to see, eh, Nick? <laughs> yeah. And then Denver's nine, Hank. Thought about going quick, but says, we're in the lead. Let's set our line, at, line out up. We haven't lost one today. Let's take our time. But, yeah, when you when you got to throw someone out of the way, it's pretty, pretty clear that uh, – He's impeding the ruck. Good line out here. Good movement as well. Schultz elects to carry that one into contact. Good job on the ruck to keep that one in. And a good job pushing the gain line by Kilfoyle. Oh, and it's a knock on Warmer here. Another dropped pass from this Denver side, and this time the captain. I haven't seen him make – I don't think I've seen him make any mistakes today. I'm sure throughout the game he might have, but definitely costly one there inside your opponent's 40-meter line with some space and just drops the ball. Look, look to run before catching it. We've got Milwaukee scrum here. The winner of today will go on to face Kansas City tomorrow at 2 p.m. As they punch their ticket over Indianapolis by five just a few short moments ago. Milwaukee out of the scrum. Gets this one to the left side of the field. Has one more man with him. Goes into contact. He's still kept up. That turns into an extra couple meters for Milwaukee. Good job carrying into contact there. Oh, but blown up by Denver. Poached away. So Denver now flips the script as Wormer on the carry there. And a penalty for Milwaukee. This one's just back and forth and back and forth, huh, Nick? Definitely is. Denver getting the favorite, but diving over the ruck. We have Milwaukee again setting up. Their set piece play. Milwaukee been successful, but haven't found themselves inside the 22 of Denver as often as they would like. Need to put points on the board. You do not want this to be a two score game with 10 minutes left. Milwaukee gets the call here. And 
as they're just a about a meter past midfield. And Warmer with his third discussion with our referee today. That's a lot yeah, of no discussions for no cards. Yeah, that's a lot yeah. of discussions for no cards. Kick for touch there. This one deep into Denver territory. Could this be the swing that Milwaukee's been looking for? Almost tipped away. It is tipped away by Denver as they fall onto it and crash. It's a knock on, though, as that tip was forward. And Milwaukee Still gets away with one here, losing the line out after a favorable kick to touch. And then, but now get to set up the scrum, which has been their be bread and butter all day long. Both sides have had an incredible scrum, but. I'm with you, Nick. I'll give the edge to Milwaukee, who hasn't given an inch all day. And another shout out to Miles Devine, the flanker who's kept in so many. Beautiful pop pass there. This one sent high, flying in the air, still retained by Milwaukee. Goes to the right side. Pushing the gain line. Almost ripped away there. But good retention. Milwaukee, a tough team to defend. They will piece these phases together over and over again and send it out. This one to Thompson and off the shoulder of Motor. Which will be called a knock-on. And Jordan Thompson just trying to find his crashing fullback, Luke Ellis, unfortunately off his hands, goes backwards, but then knocked forward by the wing. Just unfortunate there for Milwaukee. But now Denver with the ability to clear it deep out of their side. Their kicker has had a, has had a booming boot all day long. Kill foil doesn't go for the exit. Lex instead to run with this one. And he's got daylight to work with. Once more, that's Vassar. Already a try to his name and now an incredible gain. Flipping the field from 22 to 22. Kill foil sends that one out again. We'll have some forward play with Southworth, who's also got a try to his name. But number 18 sends this one in. Goldblum for his first of the day as it's been a full team effort for the Denver Barbarians who punch in another one. Yeah, don't don't listen to me, Barbarians. Don't kick the ball away. <laughs> Give it to your winner, Jake Vassar, who might be the fastest person on the field after that run. Excellent speed from him. Already a try to his name, as you said, flipping the field, 22 to 22. Two phases later, they give it to their other try scorer, Dakota Southworth, who opened the scoring for the day. And then nice offload in contact to Joe Goldblum, making an impact. Sends that conversion through kill foil. Tallies on another tack on the scoreboard. Denver now opening it up a little bit 15 minutes ago, but not out of Milwaukee's reach. We know they are capable of putting points on the board. Of course, official time is kept on the field. 
but Milwaukee still has time to get this one back. They just need to piece those phases together a little bit quicker and get that ball to their back line. Find the speed and get a quick try here. But making sure not to get too far ahead of themselves. They've recovered a couple of their restarts today. Let's see if they can get this one. Almost as that one sent back, and wisely so, by the front receiving line of Denver. Ball played up the middle. Good security on the rucks. And oh, this looks too familiar. He's got one man with him. And good luck stopping Alex Schultz as he's off to the races now. That left side of the field, so lucky for Denver as he shovels that one off to Vassar. And Vassar in for his second try of the day. And look, he's fired up. Yeah, beautiful run to start that play from Alex Schultz, splitting the gap, making a tackler miss, and then... He showed a little bit of speed up the field, brought down, and then when he's on the ground, gives it to his teammate, Jake Vassar, running an excellent support line, who's going to get his second of the game. So now it's Kilfoil again, who might just put the dagger through. Fortunately, Milwaukee... It's had a great season so far, and keep in mind, it's not over yet. There's plenty of rugby left to play, but Denver is just starting to get the steam in their engine, and they're really rolling now. And as that conversion goes through for Killfoil, Nick, what does Milwaukee need to do to be able to adjust to this Denver offense i mean i mean three quick tries for denver it was 26 to 20 not that long ago and denver just put on 19 points in the last eight ten minutes so milwaukee definitely need to slow the ball down i know they're trying to be aggressive on defense get the ball back but you can't give up these long runs it's led to three tries quickly for this denver team and then when you do have the ball at this point in the game, you need to put points on the board, need to put it in the try zone. And here they're going to have a and chance this, now. This could be their chance, Nick. Look at this. They recover off the restart, and now a good pick and go. That ball rolls out of the back of the ruck, though. Good play here to the back line. This one carried up by Hanley. Hanley has support, but it's just not there in time. Now it is, as these contested rucks by Colorado have just been all over Milwaukee. And oh, an unfortunate knock right into the lap of the Denver Barbarians. And off again. This time, it'll be the hooker, Reed Ronan, in for his first of the day for Denver. Oh, my. That was just super unfortunate from Milwaukee. They had ball moving forward, breaking the gain line continuously, and then just a pass off the hands, off the head of a Milwaukee player, goes forward and then taken for the pick five for Reed Ronan. And you got to thank Grant. That one might put this game away. That one might be too much for Milwaukee to come back with only 10 minutes left after this kick is taken. 25 points is quite a big hole to get out of, but... If any team can do it, it's Milwaukee. They've been tough all day. And sometimes it's tough for a victory to fall in your lap, but certainly a try can, as Ronan knows all too well right now, as that one just a reward for good defense, as he was just right there. Good line speed by the whole team of Denver. And Ronan rewarded for that one. Kilfoyle's approach, good. 
So now it's a 30 point deficit. Sorry, 32 point. And ever so quickly, as said two minutes ago, when Milwaukee was walking up for their last restart, this game was 26 to 20 at the 58th minute, not that long ago. So unfortunately, this one just getting more and more out of reach for Milwaukee as this time ticks down and Denver putting on more tries. See if they can get a good one here off the restart. It's a penalty for Milwaukee. Looked like there was some contact to the left side of the ball. Milwaukee's left side of the ball. Kick for touch here. That one will have a good position. Looks like We've it's seen about 10, go. 12 meters out. We've seen Milwaukee go with the mall already this game. I expect them to do the same. They need to put one on here quickly if they expect this comeback to happen. No, instead it'll be tipped away. Looks like he might not have gotten a full hand on it, but got enough. So Milwaukee. Unfortunately, on the receiving end of that penalty there. So Denver will boot this one away. Going just yeah, about in the from 30. the side from Denver. In from the side from Milwaukee. Just looking to clean up that counter ruck from Denver and just couldn't handle it cleanly, committing the penalty, and now Denver set up deep again. Doesn't necessarily need more points, but it's always nice. And when you're in a tournament, insurance is very nice, as anything could happen here in these waning moments of the Division II semifinal. The winner will face off tomorrow at 2 p.m. Good carry there. And if Denver wants insurance, it won't be easy. That bobbled pass off the turf and right into the lap. counter rucked beautifully by Milwaukee, but it'll be a penalty for Denver. in the favor of Milwaukee, of course. Milwaukee line out here. Looking to end this match on a high. Was for the middle line out, and it's right over the back, secured by Stevens. Good pop pass there, right as he gets hit. Ronan on the carry. Good movement by Denver. Finally brought down at the 22. Big carry there to push the gain line. Pavlikis gets the reward from that. Deep pass here. Crispin goes to Tanny. Takes it into contact. Got room to move. Got men with him as well. But Priest met by a couple of barbarians there to stop his gain. Kept this time by Ronan.
This one's Stevens. Look at him go. Good luck getting him down. Right on the doorstep there, about five meters away, he's finally brought down. Reaching for the line with every phase. Denver goes right to Priest, who's in for five. Yeah, this Milwaukee defense just getting driven back. Denver doing a good job breaking the game line with every phase. And just the prop, Ian Priest putting the, his first on the board of the day to put this out of reach for Milwaukee with about just over four minutes to go here. 57 to 20. Conversion just wide. No good. So Denver. Sean. Have. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say Sean Kilfoyle. Looked good kicking all day. Six of nine now on his conversions, but at this point, it doesn't matter. 57 to 20 for Denver. Denver will go on to face Indianapolis tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central Time. Penalty here for Milwaukee. Quick tap and go. Pashowitz with the pass there. Taking time to read his options and then carried in by Ferris. Another penalty for Milwaukee. Trying for that consolation. Oh, good pass there right over the head and into the lap of motor. Counter up just a little bit late by Denver. This one played on the ground. But we'll have a stoppage and go to a whistle. As it's a yellow card. Looks like that was Dakota Southworth. Knock on by Denver. Milwaukee ball here. Got a scrum coming up. Referee checking his watch. Not much time left in this one. But the scoreline does not show you how well Milwaukee has played today. They look tremendous. Unfortunately, about 65 minutes into this one, even a little earlier, Denver just started pouring on the tries. Minimize the mistakes. Met a, Thompson met there with the tackle. Run along the try line. It's good for the try. Punching it in there for the consolation, Milwaukee. We'll wrap this one up on a high note. Still got a little bit to play here as we await the conversion. And what a great score that was. Good team effort, huh, Nick? Definitely was. Uh, unfortunately for Milwaukee, just a little late, but good job going short side there, realizing they had some space. And dotting it down in the corner. Not the easiest place for your kicker to kick from, but five points is better than no points. Now 
That conversion, no good. He certainly had the boot on him, but that'll do it for the semifinal here for men's division two from all of us at next level rugby and the Midwest YouTube rugby page. I'm Grant Harrison signing off here from Lamont. Thank you so much for joining us today as we still have some more action on field one, I believe, and we will see you tomorrow for finals action.